Hey guys, this is Market Update. In this video, we're going to be looking at why the next move for BTC is going to be to the promised land, six digit Bitcoin over 100,000. Because of economic weakness, which means currency debasement, and that pushes the price of Bitcoin higher. We're going to look at that in this video. Disinflation returns. You're seeing a lot of this now. You're seeing GDP figures or estimates for that crashing from what the Atlanta Fed had at 4%, now 1.8%. So economic data is coming in weak. Now, this, of course, isn't great news for us, right? We don't want the economy to be weak, but it ultimately is weak when you measure it by GDP. And we know that the authorities can't have GDP going negative for any amount of time, hence more stimulus. That's what I want to talk about in this video, because economic weakness, it's, it's not great unless the Fed is within its debasement cycle. And I think we are in that. So we'll talk about that kind of setup in this video. So again, we're just trading at all time highs, right? The market's like waiting for this weaker economic data to come through, which is bullish, right? Because weaker economic data means weaker Fed or more dovish Fed, which is bullish for risk assets. Now, the risk here is that the Fed waits and waits and waits and says, we just want to go a little bit longer and then some private credit firm lending to commercial real estate blows up and you get a panic. Now, that panic is not good for us, right? Everything's going to drop violently, the stock market, everything else, all risk assets, Bitcoin. That is an issue, but that is not what I'm scared of. That's actually positive for the bull market because we know what the reaction will be, which is stimulus and currency debasement. We know that's going to happen. So I'm actually not worried about a blow up. What we have to be worried about is where are we in the current cycle? Because what we don't want is for the Fed and other central banks to come out and say, everything's too much, inflation too high, the economy's too strong, we need to raise rates, take money out of the system and destroy prices. But we're nowhere near that. We're actually in the complete opposite, which is why I remain bullish despite volatility. Volatility is a good thing in this part of the cycle for us. So we'll go through that. We're just trading, waiting for this economic data to come out. Um, it's seemingly quite positive for BTC. Yeah, look, we're going to have some volatility, but you can see we're in a huge uptrend here. And dips are for buying still because this is the goal, right? Six digit Bitcoin. And I think we get there in this bull market. If you do trade deposit bonus to buy a bit down in the description, if you trade crypto, just make a deposit up to $30,000 as a deposit bonus. Link down below for the details. Economic data is starting to come in a lot weaker across the board, missing a lot of estimates now. So this is something to keep an eye on. A slightly weaker economy is what the Fed wanted, right? So as long as it kind of bumbles along, then the Fed can say, hey, look, inflation is coming down. We're going to ease rates a little bit, which is good for asset prices. If this starts to accelerate, the market panics, right? Fed steps in again. But it's where we are in the cycle. The Fed is at the peak of its kind of rate hiking cycle and its hawkishness cycle, right? So the fact that economic data is coming in weak is potentially not bad news for asset prices because the next step, if the Fed has to take it, is to be way more dovish. And that means liquidity increases and asset prices go up. So it just is exactly where we are on the cycle, which I think is bullish for asset prices. Morgan Stanley believes that April data launched a sequence of weaker inflation readings with faster deceleration in the second half of this year. They think that the Fed will start cutting in September, a couple of months before the election, which is obviously very coincidental. Uh, Q2 GDP estimate by Atlanta Fed was 4.2. It's now 1.8, falling off a cliff. So how can they be so wrong? Right? It's almost like it's on purpose to try and manipulate behavior in a certain way. If you look at the uh, cor what correspondents were saying here from one of the latest reports, minor slowdown, markets are soft, um, You know, new orders not coming in. One of them said inflation continues to be a problem with pricing of raw materials and interest rates. So one of them is actually saying that interest rates making um, their costs go up, which is kind of ironic. Uh, bookings are starting to slow down. So a soft period. It's not the end of the world. It's not a disaster. And it's actually pretty good for asset prices considering where we are in the cycle, which is the market's looking forward saying, well, if things are a bit soft, so can the Fed be. So this is a great time for risk assets to outperform looking forward because they price in the future. If we start to really accelerate down, then hold on to your hats. But where we are in the cycle means that the Fed really becomes dovish. And that means really good asset prices.
pretty much everything is coming in under estimates and missing, right? This is a good list here from uh, this account on, on Twitter. Q1 real GDP was revised down. The Atlanta Fed uh, forecast was revised lower. Real consumer spending was negative. Um, revised down Q4 wage and salary income gains. Pending home sales fell 7%. Manufacturing new orders came down in contraction. Anything below 50 is contraction. This is 45. Manufacturing back, uh, backlogs is down 42. Again, 50 would be um, neutral. So contraction. Contraction everywhere. Right. So why rates at 5%? Right. Inflation coming down more than 50% of the CPI components running below the 2% target. You can see here. This potentially as well. This These lagging indicators as well. A lot of this is rent and the rental index. That always lags, and that's going to be coming down throughout the second half of this year as well. So they could actually be coming in below 2% inflation. And everyone was saying, never again, right, the fiscal side. Well, it it looks pretty weak, right? Uh, number of discussions on earning calls of inflation. You can see this coming down as well. Uh, XUS disinflation is in full swing. You can see that here. That's why Europe wants to cut this month. So this trend is pretty obvious at this point. Some things are going to be sticky. That's just how the data goes. But we're within normal ranges at this point, right? And so there's there's two things that can happen. We kind of normalize in normal ranges. Hey, maybe inflation is like a couple of points higher or like you know, a couple of basis points, 50 basis points higher than the long-term trend. Crypto doesn't care about that. It's growing 100% a year, right? That's irrelevant. So that's that's what we have to focus on. The other thing is if this continues and goes really low, it's going to be met with stimulus. And that's the real big bull market, right? So either way, you've got an outperforming asset in crypto and you've got normal conditions or weak conditions coming. It's not going to start accelerating too much again, right? Until we see that weak data for a while and then the, the central banks can cut if they want, which then will re-accelerate inflation later, you know, after the bull market. And that's obviously the next bear market where they have to slow things down again. But nothing is showing us that we're you know, too hot or anything like that, which actually is pretty good for risk asset prices because they're pricing in the reaction of central banks over the next year or so. China's easing, Europe's easing, Fed, maybe they can afford to be a little bit slower, but they're not going to be uh, hiking rates and, and doing a lot more QT. I mean, they've already flipped, right? They've already flipped. They're, they're easing QT. They're putting dollar liquidity around the system through swap lines right to, the, to Japan. It's, it's happening. It's a bull market. I think there's two things that show us we're in a big bull market. So the first is credit creation or money creation around the world is growing. It's really good for risk asset prices. And the second thing is the major central banks that are important for us are as hawkish as they're going to get. And the, the next phase, the next 12 months is them becoming more dovish. So those two things are great for risk asset prices, right? The time to be scared is when central banks are ultra dovish printing and at zero rates, because where do you go from there? Well, they have to tighten again. So we're in that perfect phase where we're just looking forward to the next year saying central banks are going to be easier and money creation is going north. It's good for risk asset prices. When to get scared is when you're at the peak of that cycle. And the next phase is a contraction again. Bitcoin shows us that 2017. You can see here this big spike. Okay, that's the top of the bull market. 21 2 we had that same spike. Look at this, this cycle measured as glass nose say measured very measured it's not peak bull market yet so we've got a long way to go these drawdowns happen but instead of looking at the drawdown look at the reaction of the drawdown because like i said if inflation data or economic data starts to really fall off a cliff markets get scared and they draw down but look what happens in bull markets which i think we're in right because we're in that phase where central banks get more dovish you have a drawdown but the reaction is you just recover it and go to new all-time highs like every time. Not the drawdown, but it's the reaction from the drawdown. It's literally straight back up. That's a bull market. And you need more dovish central banks and money supply and credit creation and liquidity, which is happening and is growing. That's why I think a bull market. Short-term holder realized profit loss. Again, big bull market here when things get overdone. We're not there, right? The market is definitely not mature, crazy phase bull market, which we know can happen, but we're not there. This is profitability state again, just showing we are in a big expansion. We're in a bull market and we're seeing signs, right, that we're in a bull market, but it tends to carry on for a long time. 
So as you can see here, it enters the euphoria phase where the supply and profit starts to fluctuate around the 90% level for the next six to 12 months. The current phase started and has been active for around two and a half months. So again, not mature in the bull market, right? We're in it, but we're not in that phase where we have to get scared about the bear market drawdown. We've still got a long way to go. Bear market drawdowns are very different to bull market drawdowns. Bull market drawdowns, market gets scared, big drop in prices, Fed can step in. That's a bull market for risk assets. A bear market is when everyone's euphoric and you know then the Fed has to say, we actually need to tighten and make you all bankrupt. We're not in that phase. That's a bear market. We're in a bull market where the next phase is the Fed says, okay, we can be easier because the economy, look at all the data. So it's going to be rocky, but I think we're there. This is M2. Like I said, credit creation or money creation worldwide. This is global M2 and Bitcoin. So as you can see, global M2, as it goes up and peaks, so does BTC. The 2017-18 cycle, the last cycle, right? Now that's too much. And so it gets drawn down and they're the bear markets for BTC. It has a very, very high correlation here. You can see what's happening, right? The money supply around the world is increasing again. And if you look, the general trend of money supply is to increase fiat currency supply, um, obviously, because it's an expanding system. So we're in expansion phase. Now, if you can see where Global M2 got to its lowest point was uh, November 22, right? So if we go to November 22 on the Bitcoin chart, that's right here, the absolute bottom price and the, the, the bear market low. And as M2 is increasing, so is BTC. So we're in a phase where the economy is weaker, it looks like. It's definitely not booming, right? A ton of stimulus is pouring into the markets, but it's still not really carrying a lot uh, of weight in, in GDP. It looks to be coming weaker. So despite all the government stimulus, slightly weaker GDP, looks like inflation is coming down to some level. So we either stay here or we get more dubbish. Well, that's good news for risk assets. If you can just handle the volatility and all of the narratives and you know all of the panic that happens in market short term, we're in a good phase. And so that 100K, I mean, it's in sight, right? It's going to happen over the next 12 months, whether we get there or not, right? So we're in the bull market. So really this time we should break that six figure BTC. If you do trade, check out the Bybit deposit bonus down below and the crypto investor course. I'll be updating it um, over the next few weeks with some updated research uh, for crypto course members. I'm James of Mazzy G. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.